welcome back. Like you know, I'm already running this series on healing, which I call Another Look at Healing. And this first segment, we're looking at hindrances to healing. What are the things that have stopped us from receiving our healing? Last Sunday, we looked at ignorance and the different facets of ignorance. We also looked at unbelief, which is was mind-blowing. Then on Tuesday, we went a step further and looked at the natural laws of healing. A lot of people received their healing and lost it because they weren't observing the natural laws of healing. The same God that told the children of Israel that he's the healer, he's Jehovah Rapha, in that same law, told them something and gave them several laws regarding their sanitation, their diet, and a lot of things. And as you know, sanitation and diet has a direct impact on your health. So if God says, I'm the healer, I'll heal you, I'll take away sickness and disease, and at the same time, give those laws, that tells you something about the laws of health. You must observe them. You must observe the laws of health, and at the same time, believe God for your healing. Both must be in your life. You must have both. You must fly with both wings. You can't fly with one wing. So today we're moving further to the next thing I believe has hindered a lot of people from receiving their healing. And it's what I call men's doctrine. So we're going to invite the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, to come teach us his word this evening. Holy Spirit, I ask that you speak to us this evening, that you teach us your word. Let it be plain, clear, simple to understand. Let it be written and coded on the fleshy part of our heart, never to leave. This is my prayer today. I hide myself and I ask that you speak. I shut down my brain and I ask that you speak through my mouth. Use and possess me entirely to declare your word simply that everyone will grasp it this evening in the name of Jesus. Amen and Amen. So what do I mean by man's doctrines? There are a lot of men's doctrines that have stopped or hindered a lot of believers and non-believers from receiving their healing. And the first one I'm going to talk about, which is very, very common in the believing circle, is what I call Paul's thorn in the flesh. A few months ago, I believe, I did serious exposition on what Paul's thorn in the flesh is. So if you're watching this after the service, just click on the link on the top right corner. It will take you to that two-part message which I call Paul's thorn in the flesh. And you understand that Paul's thorn in the flesh has nothing to do with sickness or diseases. But we've thought that as one of the things that God gave to Paul to humble him. That God gave him one sickness. That God gave him one um, sickness of the eye or disease of the eye. And that was what Paul was talking about there. That is not scriptural. It is nowhere in the scripture. So, listen to that message in depth. It's going to bless you. I'm sure of it. Another reason that, you know, man has postulated that has also stopped people from receiving their healing is the doctrine that God is the author of sickness and disease. I don't know if you've heard that. People have said that God is the author of sickness and disease, that everything came from God, including sickness and including disease. That is wrong. That is absolutely wrong. Sickness and diseases are a symptom or a follow-up or a consequence of the fall of man. Sickness and diseases can also be put on a person or an individual by devils. And we're going to look at that in the future. It does not come from God. The personality behind sickness and diseases is what we call the spirit of infirmity. He's a member of the kingdom of darkness. He's not from God's camp. He's from the camp of the enemy. The spirit of infirmity. He's the one behind a lot of sicknesses and diseases. Not God. God is not the author of sickness and disease. God cannot give Jesus 
his mission, which includes coming to heal the brokenhearted, coming to set the captive free, coming to release those that are oppressed either by sickness or by Satan, and at the same time be the author of sickness and disease. It does not make sense. God doesn't function that way. It doesn't make sense. So we need to get this clear. If God is the author of sickness and disease, Jesus is a lawbreaker because he's trying to stop what his father authored. If God is the author of sickness and disease, doctors and nurses are lawbreakers and God will come after them. <laughs> Just think about it. So God is not the author of sickness and disease, but he is the finisher of sickness and disease. He puts to end every work of the devil in your life, including sickness and disease. And that is the reason Jesus, our master, was sent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Another man's doctrine or men's doctrine is um, God is glorified when you are sick. That God receives glory when you are sick. And let me explain what they mean. It's not when you are sick that it makes you revert to God. It makes you look for solution and you turn to God. So it's a follow-up from the last reason. So God gives you sickness, makes you sick, so you can seek him. That is one of his strategy of pulling men and drawing men to him. I've heard, I believe, one person say something similar to that. He said, I drew closer to God in the time of my sickness. That was the best time of my life. My best time I had a good and nice relationship with God. It is that sickness that drew me to God. I get that. But don't think that or say that from the aspect or having the understanding that it is God that gave you that sickness so he can draw you close to him. No, 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 no. It was Satan that gave you that sickness. What he did not anticipate is that it will pull you close to God. That's why he did not anticipate. He gave you that sickness. He brought that disease to kill you. He didn't bring it for you to get close to God. He wanted to kill you. God will not use the tools of Satan because he wants you to draw close to him. That is not how our God functions. That is not how God functions. That is totally unscriptural. 100% unscriptural. Another one that is common is that the time and the age of miracles have passed. I'm sure you've heard that. They said, no, it was during the time of the apostles. That was when healing of sicknesses and disease was rife. That it ended with the acts of the apostles. That since the apostles died, no one was healed from sickness and disease. Now, might I say this? That that book called The Acts of the Apostles was not really titled properly. It is not or should not have been called The Acts of the Apostles. It should have been called The Acts of the Holy Ghost. Why? It started with the coming of the Holy Ghost. So all those acts that the apostles carried on or carried out were acts of the Holy Ghost. They did everything they did because they were endued with power from on high. They were endued with power of the Holy Ghost. So it's actually the Holy Ghost that is walking through them to heal the sick, to free the oppressed, to cast out devils, to raise the dead. It is the Holy Ghost. And that book, if properly titled, will also tell you something that it was not finished. That book did not have a conclusive end. Do you know why? We are still living in the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. That means his acts are still on here on earth, including healing the sick. 
They're still on. They've not ended. My acts are part of that book. The acts of the men of God, you know, from yesteryears are part of that book. So it should be properly titled the acts of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is not yet done. Since his dispensation has not closed, guess what? Healing of the sick, healing of sickness and diseases are still going on in our day because we still have the Holy Ghost. Another doctrine of man is that it is God's will not to heal all. That God chooses some to heal and he despises others. That is his prerogative to heal those he chooses to heal. And there are some he won't heal. That is also not true. The Bible says that they brought people that were sick to Christ. And the Bible says that Jesus healed them all. You can read it. Um, the scripture is on the screen. He healed them all. All. It is God's will to heal all. Not some. Not a few. It's to heal all. One reason why you have not received your healing might be that you are not walking in faith. Because for you to receive anything from God, you must receive it by faith. So when you are still struggling with faith, don't conclude that you are not part of those that God wants to heal. You are. You are. Healing is the children's bread. Healing was baked for you. It was made for you. God wants to heal you. All he needs from you is that you step up by faith and receive that which he has provided for already for you. God wants to heal all, not some. And you are part of that all that God wants to heal today. And the final one under this subject of men's doctrine is the doctrine that Jesus healed the sick as the Son of God, not as a man. And that one doesn't make sense at all because the disciples, the apostles, healed the sick as well, and they were men. So saying that Jesus healed the sick as the Son of God and not as Son of Man doesn't hold water. The Bible tells us clearly in Philippians chapter 2 that Jesus discarded and left behind everything that made him God. Every part of his divinity was left back in heaven when he was born here by a woman, as a man, as a human being. He was a man. That's why he needed to pass through everything we humans pass through so he can become a better high priest for us now in heaven. So he healed the sick as a man, not as God. That's why he told his disciples in John chapter 5 that, see, as I see my father do, so I do. So as the son of man, he will watch what his father is doing, that he will step out here on earth by faith and execute the father's will on earth. He says, as my father walketh, he thought to I walk. He said that everything I do, it is my father that is walking through me. The same way that when I step out to heal the sick, the same way when I pray for the sick this, after, this evening, it is the Holy Spirit, the father, walking through me to you to heal you. It is the same thing. It's how Jesus operated. It was the Holy Spirit, the Father, walking through him to heal the sick. And he's going to heal everyone that will connect this evening, that is sick or feeling any pain. When I pray, the Holy Spirit will walk through me to heal and touch your body, wherever that sickness or pain is. If you believe that, shout a big amen. Glory be to God. That is how it works. One of the reasons why some people don't receive healing is that the particular sickness or the disease they are suffering from was put there by an evil spirit or is in their body because 
of the presence of an evil spirit. So you don't pray the prayer of healing for that person alone. In fact, you don't even start with healing. You need to cast out the devil that is causing that sickness or disease because of his presence in that person's body or his presence in that person's mind or his presence in that person's spirit. When the cause has been ejected, the sickness, which is the effect, will leave automatically. Now, that's why healing ministers must understand this whenever they are, you know, carrying out the healing process. They must be attuned to the Holy Spirit to receive guidance. They must be able to discern if this sick person is sick because of the presence of an evil spirit. The Holy Spirit will tell you. You can discern. So what you do first is to handle the cause. And how you handle the cause is by casting out that evil spirit in the name of Jesus. When that spirit is ejected, depending on the sickness and disease, if that sickness and disease have caused bodily harm, either externally or internally, after you've checked out the evil spirit, you now minister healing or walking of miracles on that person. Jesus is our example. The Bible says in Mark chapter 9, verse 25, that a deaf and a dumb spirit needed to be cast out from a person that couldn't hear nor speak. Jesus discerned that this was caused by an evil spirit. And what did he do in Mark 9, verse 25? The Bible says, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying to them, saying to him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge you, come out of him and enter no more in him. If Jesus had just ministered healing to the man without casting out the spirit out, do what would have happened when the man leaves Jesus' presence, that spirit will bring back the deafness and the dumbness upon the man. But Jesus knew better. He was constantly led by the spirit. He could discern that it was an evil spirit causing that. So he commanded that spirit out. And the man automatically started hearing and speaking. An example which I mentioned on Sunday was about that little boy that the father brought to the disciples to heal. The lunatic. The Bible tells us in Matthew 17 verse 15 when the man came and asked that Jesus healed Heal his son. In verse 18, the Bible says that Jesus rebuked the devil. Rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. And the child was cured that same hour. So it was the devil that made the man or the little boy appear as if he was a lunatic. So it could have been a spirit of epilepsy or a spirit that affected his mind that made him a bit bipolar or schizophrenia that wanted to throw him into the fire. It was a spirit, it was an evil spirit that was working that in the boy's body. And Jesus cast the spirit out. Handle the curse where you do the effect will fizzle away. So if you're a healing minister, you must understand the place of discerning, discerning spirits when you are ministering healing. Very important that you know that. Another reason or another hindrance to receiving your healing is sin. This is very important that we know this. There might be a prevalent sin in one's life that has opened the door for either devils to bring sickness or disease or have opened the door for pathogens 
to afflict the person. You see somebody that is um, careless when it comes to sex. He has or she has sex with anybody without protection. What do you think will happen? The person is going to get some bacterial infection, some fungi infection, some even viral infection. Bro, because you are committing that sin, you are exposed to sickness and diseases. Then, there is a sin, peradventure, as a believer, God has warned you and warned you and warned you to stop. But because the Bible says that that person that have refused to repent because God wants to save his soul might cut his life short so that his soul will be saved at the end. One of the ways that might happen is that because he has been sinning without repenting, he opens the door for Satan to inflict him with sickness and disease that will eventually kill him. So you can see that sin is a door opener to sickness and disease. So you need to stop the sin, repent. That means you have to turn around and stop sinning and get someone to pray a prayer of healing over you or prayer of faith that heals the sick and you will receive the healing. But first you must stop that sin. And the Holy Spirit, if you're a Christian that is inside of you, will always tell you, will always nudge you that this is the reason why you this is happening because you opened the door to the devil and the devil brought sin, not God. You opened the door through your sin to the devil and the devil brought those sickness and diseases on you. So when you repent of your sin, God will bring healing to you. Hallelujah. Another reason why people have not received their healing is that they have been unwilling to surrender to God. And this is especially for, first, unbelievers that have refused to accept Christ into their lives. They have refused to make God their Lord. Even believers that have not given God his place in their lives as their Lord and Savior. It might stop and hinder them from receiving their healing. Glory be to God. And the last one we're going to look at today, and we'll continue on Tuesday, is unforgiveness. Oh, I wrote a book on this. You can get it on Amazon. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Sins of the heart. The Bible says that God will forgive you if you forgive your brethren. Say, forgive us our sins as we, as we forgive those who trespass against us. God will forgive you based on how you forgive another person. At times when you hold someone down, you have this grudge against someone because of what they did to you. Again, it opens the door for the enemy. And because you have refused to forgive another, it becomes difficult based on God's word for him to forgive you, for him to heal you. So you must first take that step to release those that you're holding down, to forgive those that might have hurt you, when you forgive them, then any prayer of faith for healing prayed over you will work. And I can tell you many stories on that. People have queued up in the healing line and a minister will come based on the discernment of spirit. We want to pray. There's a particular one. Get a Hagen wanted to pray for the woman. The spirit immediately told him that she's in unforgiveness. She won't be healed. Tell her to go forgive her mom. Until she forgives her mom, she will not be healed. And there are many stories like that. Many stories like that. In my book about forgiveness, I showed in that book that medical science have proven that unforgiveness 
is one of the reasons that a lot of terminal illness come upon people. So unforgiveness opens the door to sickness and diseases. And until you let that person go, the sickness and disease will prevail. I can go on and on on this subject and it will take me days and weeks. But what I want to say to you this evening is, if there's anyone that have hurt you, because the instruction in the word is if you were hurt, not if you hurt alone. If you hurt someone, of course, the Bible says go. But even if you are not the one that hurt someone, but somebody's action hurt you, made you feel bad, you are not even excused from going. The Bible still says go. Seek out that person and ask for forgiveness. And that is the key to your healing. Don't let that unforgiving spirit hold you down. Like a wise man said, when you refuse to forgive someone, you are actually holding yourself down. You are pinning yourself down thinking you are pinning that person down. Now, because you've held the person down, you can't even get up and move on with your life. But the person you thought you were holding down is moving, going, doing things, enjoying, living their best life. But you are stuck at a place. I urge you this evening to release that person. When you release that person, you will be released from sicknesses and from diseases. And this is where I am today. Now, if you are listening to me and you are sick, or there's any pain, any part of your body, I'm going to command that foul spirit, you foul spirit of infirmity, causing that sickness, causing that disease, I command you now, out from that person's body. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing now. Or not this daughter, this son of God, be loosed from their infirmity. I command that pain out from your ankles and from your wrists and from your joints. I speak healing to your heart. I command that valve in your heart to be repaired now. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing. That migraine goes now in the name of Jesus. That sleeplessness goes. Insomnia out. Let the peace of God flood your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus this night. Receive your healing. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Send us your testimonies of your healings. I want to read them. I would love to read them. You can contact us with the address on the screen. Send us, send us your testimony. I'm looking forward to reading them. Whom the Lord has set free is free <laughs> indeed. Glory be to God. If you've got an offering, this is the time to give it. Father, bless those giving. Increase them, expand them. Let it be a point of contact, those giving. For their healing, let it be a point of contact upon which they will receive good health and their healing and the healing of their souls and their bodies as they stretch out the hand of faith. Lord, hold them by that hand and deliver their miracles to them in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. We are continuing on Tuesday, so don't miss it for anything. The details are on the screen. Go to that link, click, fill the form. You're going to get the link to the meeting. The meeting is held on Zoom. It's not public. And your life will not remain the same. Go back, listen to the messages on YouTube. Catch up, like I told um, the people on Tuesday. It is a message you must download and listen to it continuously. To God's word as regarding healing is formed in your heart and your souls and your mind. <laughs> through Christ Jesus. I love you. Go succeed. Go prosper. For God 
is always with you. He will never leave you. He will never, ever, never forsake you. See you on Tuesday. Bye-bye.